Hello, everybody. This is Maxine Taylor, and I have got the astrological overview for the month of March um, 2024. I had to look that neural pathway, really not functioning quite the way I want yet. Um, so we've got some very interesting things going on uh, this month. And as soon as I finish all of the sun signs, I'm going to record the United States forecast uh, for you. Uh, some of you might recall last time I did any forecasting, uh, which was, I can't believe it's been a month. It, it, time is flying by. I talked about Mars on the United States Midheaven. Yeah, baby. So be looking out for that. Uh, I probably won't get it done till later on today, but hang in there. I think you'll I think you'll get a charge out of it. All right, let's see what's going on here. Um, first of all, we've got so many holidays coming up this month. Um Ramadan, of course, is March 4th. For those who celebrate, I, I hope it brings you everything you want. Um, daylight Savings Time also starts on March 4th. Um, I don't know about you, but it takes me a while to get used to that hour difference. Um, and when I say a while, I mean right up to the time when it it comes <laughs> out of um, daylight savings time. Okay, uh, Mercury, the planet Mercury, is in the shadow of the retrograde. Now, uh, you know what that means. It will move into the shadow on the 19th. When Mercury moves into the shadow, it feels like it's retrograde. It's not, but it feels like it. So a lot of my students have asked, and my clients who know about astrology, of course, um, can I start a new project on um, the when Mercury's in the shadow of the retrograde? Yes, you can. There's nothing holding you back, except that when Mercury is in the shadow of the retrograde, it feels just like it's retro, which means <clears throat> everything is confused. Um, you plan on lunch with a group of people. Uh, several of them go to the wrong restaurant. A couple of them show up late. Um, it feels exactly like a retrograde Mercury. Um, so Mercury will actually go retrograde on April 2nd. All right. Now, St. Patrick's Day, of course, is on the 17th. Um, I, I do think that all of the um, bars and restaurants that sell uh, liquor uh, are, are waiting just waiting for St. Patty's Day. Um, it is a, a beautiful celebration. So for those of you celebrating, have one for me, okay? Um, we got to get everybody in. So on the 23rd, Purim starts. And so um, <clears throat> I'm wishing all my lawnsmen a happy Purim. Uh, on March 24th, it's Palm Sunday. And on March 31st, it's Easter Sunday. I mean, I don't remember when I had a list of celebrations like this. So no matter what you are celebrating, may it bring you everything that your heart desires. All righty. Now, let's talk about some astrological stuff here because 
we have an eclipse this month. All right. I think I'll save that for last because I love eclipses. They kick butt. They propel us forward. So um, I will get to it. Let's see. Ah, that's much better. The sun, the center of our solar system, <clears throat> the giver of life, is in dreamy uh, Pisces, spiritual Pisces, artistic Pisces, um, I'm trying to find one word and I can't. Pisceans are artistic. They're spiritual. They um, are very sensitive. They're a water sign. They feel everything. Um, they tend to want to serve so much that they give so much of themselves away. Um, they are spiritual. Uh, they are the final sign of the zodiac. And they are two fish tied together by the tail, each going in their own direction. And you know how I always say, uh, for Aquarius, they say, um, Am I crazy or is the world crazy? Pisces says, where am I? What am I doing here? Whose idea was this? It's a, a very spiritual sign of loving and caring service or escapism to alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, uh, sleeping, anything done to excess. Now, sometimes that's a good thing. So there's no judgment involved. Uh, and so the sun is in Pisces, even as I speak, on the 19th, which is the spring equinox. You know, just keep all of the events separate and we'll just keep running down the list. Um. And it moves into Aries on the 19th. Now, you have beautiful, inspired, spiritual, dreamy, service-oriented Pisces. And then Aries, let's go. Let's do it now. Are you with me? No problem. I'll go it myself. I do what I want, when I want, how I want, because I want. And I'm getting the job done. Uh, and I'm going to do this, 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 and this. Y'all call me when you're ready for me. Totally different. The energy kicks in when the sun goes into Aries. Uh, many of my students have, have told me they're, they're counting the days um, because things are, think of it this way. Pisces and Jupiter co-rule, uh, did I say Pisces? Excuse me. Neptune and Jupiter both rule Pisces. They are very lovely signs. Jupiter is the greater benefic, <laughs> okay? Pisces ruled by Neptune. You can take a pick about which one you prefer is dreamy and spiritual and has great ideas. Aries is ruled by Mars. Mars is the warrior. Mars says, I'm doing it my way and I'm doing it now. So there's quite a difference between the two of them. I'm just saying. All right. Now, Venus starts off the month in Aquarius. Um, Aquarius is a very universal sign. It's a humanitarian sign. It's not a warm and fuzzy, cuddly sign. It is an air sign. So there's a lot of thinking going on. 
I used to say years ago, and I still feel this way, I can tell somebody who has a lot of Aquarius in their chart. No, I can't guess your sun sign. Okay. But uh, I can feel, I can see the Aquarius in somebody who has a planet or the ascendant uh, or in um, Aquarius or even just planets in the 11th house because there is a gaze that they have. They have magnificent eyes. Uh, they know that what is best for the whole is best for the individuals that comprise the whole, the group. Um, most of us say, no, I'm, I'm going to take care of number one. Aquarius, now Venus, the planet of love and beauty and money and artis artistic endeavors has been in Aquarius and it will stay there till the 11th when it moves into dreamy Pisces. Now, uh, when I say dreamy, uh, Venus in Pisces is just exalted. It's just magnificent. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, Mercury. Mercury is our conscious mind. It's what you think about and talk about, right? Okay. On the ninth, it moves into Aries. Now, with our conscious mind, and this is the entire world, um, in Pisces, it can be confusing because the conscious mind is dealing with the sign that rules the 12th house of the subconscious and the spirit plane. When it moves into Aries, look out. Fast talking, fast moving. Just let's get going. And remember that on the 19th, Mercury moves into the shadow of the retrograde. Mars, our warrior. That's wherever it is in your chart. That's what you fight with and fight for. It has been in Aquarius. And so um, large groups of people have been uh, what we're talking about here. Um, on the 22nd, Mars, uh, which says, I'm doing my thing my way, moves into Pisces and says, all right, now let's look at a higher calling. Let's get above it and see the big picture and serve from there. It's very, very interesting. You know, this happens um, once every two years because Mars has um, a, time, a circulation time uh, of two years. It, it comes back to the same place in two years. And our dear friend, Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter is the greater benefic. We've got Venus and Jupiter, the two good guys. Um, Jupiter is still in Taurus. It is not retrograde. It's in Taurus. And that is where we will be abundant. Now, it's not just money. It's everything, all the good stuff. It expands whatever it touches. So if you're overeating, you get my story, right? You get the drift. Okay. Now, let's talk about the new moon and the full moon. The new moon is March 10th. Okay. On the new moon, every, the energy, the Earth's energy, everybody's energy starts to grow and it grows and it grows and it grows and you can watch the moon grow because that is what is happening okay so two days before the new moon if you look outside at night it's dark that's because 
there's no moon. I don't mean the moon disappears. Um, but you can find the moon and the moon rules function and form. How things function and how they grow, how they form. On the new moon, the moon starts moving forward and people are energetic. So of course, if you're gonna start a new project, you wanna make sure Mercury is not retrograde. And if you possibly can, start a, the new project um, on the growing moon. That's one of the rules of astrology. Okay. Now, two weeks later, on the full moon, we have an eclipse. And I've already told you I love eclipses because it gets you off your rump and gets you going. Um, for a few days before the full moon, slash eclipse uh, and I'm talking just the full moon uh, you feel tense the world is tense they're waiting for something and they don't know what it is um, on the full moon the full things come to a head now is that a quote unquote bad thing no not at all especially as an eclipse, because we're going to feel the effects of an eclipse about a week before it occurs. It is going to be with us for at least a year. I've seen eclipses in, in clients' charts that lasted two years because the end result uh, was so important, so big, it needed a slow build up. So the full moon slash lunar eclipse is March 25th in five degrees of Libra. Find five of Libra in your birth chart. And that is where this eclipse is going to fall. Um, some people want to know what kind of orb I use. Uh, I use a 10 degree orb. So um, if you want to be safe about it, five degrees before the, uh, before the eclipse, um, five degrees afterwards, um, but 10 degrees in either direction. Uh, it's stretching it a little, but in total, 10. Let's just say five and five, okay? Um, now, have you already started feeling Mercury moving into the shadow? You can feel this full moon, this lunar eclipse at least a week ahead. Some of you are incredibly intuitive. Um, I know I've met you, we've talked, it's, I mean, you, your, your antenna are always picking up things, um, which is why I encourage all my empathic friends to be with warm and loving people. You don't want to be around somebody who's filled with anger. You'll feel it yourself, and it can make you sick. You don't need that kind of grief. So, normally... Uh, on an eclipse, well, not on an eclipse, but the result of the eclipse is it, it you feel it three to four months after it occurs. If that eclipse sits on your sun, moon, or ascendant, I call that a new life eclipse. And this is when you may feel it for at least a year afterwards. Uh, there can be some wonderful effects as a result of an eclipse sitting on your sun, which is your ego, your strength. Um, are you shocked that I said ego without 
saying, oh, terrible ego. Mm -mm. It sits on your sun, the center of your life. Your message from your father. If it sits on your moon, it's your message from your mother. And I sure do hope that those of you who study astrology know what I'm talking about. Um, I suggest that you might be interested, if if you're not familiar with this, uh, to get my book, uh, um, see, hidden uh, Secrets in Your Birth Chart, or Hidden <laughs> Messages, that's the one, Hidden Messages in Your Birth Chart, um, because it talks about the messages that we receive from mommy, daddy, our bloodline, and the matri matriarch, the person who makes the rules for the entire family. Okay, I think that's it. I'm going to uh, now get ready to do everybody's forecast according to their sign. So join me next month when once again, we chat. May March be marvelous for you. And until then, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.